okay all right so let us begin so in the last class we learned about um, you know carbohydrates and proteins the very very basics we learned um and i told you we will learn more elaborately later when we got get to those specific chapters so today what we are going to do is um we are going to continue that you know a basic introduction to the other molecules of life so the next uh, molecule in this is uh, nucleic acids okay so nucleic acids is what uh, we are going to uh, look at so uh nucleic acids again just like how we learned in carbohydrates and proteins we'll first fun uh, begin with the functions of nucleic acids um because i always believe that once we know the importance of a molecule for life then we pay more attention to understanding its uh, chemistry okay um so this one is a common knowledge anyone who knows english i'm sure already knows nucleic acids are the genetic material okay so they are the a repository of biological information so what is biological information so the the information required to make uh, a particular biological function for for example if you take uh, human beings only human beings give rise to human beings and at the same time human beings cannot produce other organisms uh, and other organisms cannot produce anything other than their own kind so all this tells is every species for example homo sapiens uh, we have the information in our genetic material to make another homo sapiens okay and that is what we call as the biological information when i say make another homo sapien meaning all aspects of it the anatomy morphology functions everything okay so the information to make or the blueprint to make another organisms of the same kind uh is stored in nucleic acids and that is why nucleic acids become another really important molecules so that's their primary function so they are not simply storage of information or uh, they have in their structure uh, there is the ability to copy and transmit that information to a subsequent generation as well um so that is the importance of uh, nucleic acids that that's their main function storage and transmission of biological information so now let us look at you know since it's a biochemistry class our focus is knowing the chemical structure and the chemical function of these molecules and then make um biological sense out of them in terms of the biological function so um their structure is again you know they like all biomolecules they look really large molecules and look really complex but when you look into the basic principles you will realize where they are all simple very simple molecules uh and the complexity comes from the way the simple molecules are arranged repetitively and joined into a polymer so here if you look at it uh the on the right side of the slide you see a long chain of um, you know like hexagonal or pentagonal structures joined by um a long line and that is how a polymer of nucleic acid looks so in carbohydrates it is we called that as a polysaccharide in proteins we called polypeptide so here it is polynucleotide so the repeating monomer is a nucleotide so where my cursor you focus on that and that is a nucleotide so the nucleotide has three important components one shown in this orange color so this is a nitrogenous base because this ring structure has nitrogen and therefore we call this as a nitrogenous base they are of two kinds the smaller one we call the purine because it's the purine ring structure or pyrimidine so you have uh, in a hexagon and a pentagon attached this is a pyrimidine so there are two kinds purine the big molecule has the shorter name purine 
and the smaller one has the longer name pyrimidine and that is one component of this uh, monomer called mononucleotide and the other component is a sugar so we became familiar with glucose and fructose so glucose is a hexose so here what is present is a pentose five carbon sugar called a ribose okay and this attachment you may not find it hard because uh, we know that the sugar molecule has alcohol groups hydroxyl groups and with that you can easily attach the way one sugar is attached to another sugar and similarly to another hydroxyl group on the ribose you can have uh, another kind of link so here it is a phosphoric acid so it is a phosphor di uh, it, it's an uh, un, you know it's an ester linkage alcohol acid ester linkage and that phosphoric acid can make another ester linkage with another ribose and this phosphoric acid this ribose sugar and this nitrogenous base all three put together as shown in this big uh, enlarged cartoon forms a nucleotide okay nitrogenous base pentose sugar and to that you have a phosphate group attached so phosphate group has you know it is h3po4 so you have three acid groups okay the hydroxyl group here it is an inorganic acid this, this is an acid moiety it's not to be confused with the uh, alcohol group that you will find in a um, um, organic molecule okay so organic acid is carboxylic acid cooh so here it is um, you know this is 3po4 these are the three acid groups of the three acid group here one is in ester linkage with this alcohol group ch2oh and the other one is attached to the next one in a long polynucleotide chain and there is a third one that is still free and that dissociates when dissolved in water releasing proton and therefore this long polymer is actually an acid because every one of this phosphate group in this long chain has one acid group free and that dissociates giving proton in solution so therefore uh, this polynucleotide is actually an acid that is why we call it as nucleic acids okay so now let us get into a little bit more detail uh, I told you nitrogenous base uh, two types that is visible in this cartoon like you have a pyrimidine and purine so now let us look at what are the different purines and what are the different pyrimidines so here are the three pyrimidines shown um, in the top left orange box so cytosine, thymine. So these two are present in the nucleic acid where the information is stored and whose replication helps in transmitting to next generation. And that is DNA. So, okay, so in DNA you have cytosine, thymine. So these are the two pyrimidines. In another kind of RNA called ribonucleic acid or RNA, you have instead of thymine you have uracil so in rna you find cytosine and uracil instead of thymine and purine in both the kind of nucleic acids it's uh, they are the same two kinds one is adenine and another one is guanine so here you have the structures so you see the nitrogen atoms in present in these molecules so that is why this is called nitrogen these are called nitrogenous bases okay um, so now I introduce this new term RNA and then I first mentioned DNA. So what's the difference between the two? The difference is quite uh, simple. If you focus your attention on this second carbon, so we already learned in carbohydrate class, this is one, two, three, four, and there it was hexo hexose and therefore there was one more and this was six. So this is pentose, so this is five. So the second carbon, if it has a hydrogen instead of hydroxyl group, so therefore ending up having two hydrogens, it's deoxyribose because ribose normally has a hydroxyl group here. And if it doesn't have the hydroxyl group, it is called deoxyribose. 
and if that is the kind of ribose present in a long chain then that is deoxyribonucleic acid and shortly dna and instead if a normal ribose is present with its hydroxyl group in the uh, second carbon then we call this as ribonucleic acid or rna okay so one other important information to learn here is we don't call this carbon numbering as 1 2 3 4 5 5 instead we call them 1 prime 2 prime 3 prime 4 prime 5 prime the reason we number the carbon of uh, sugar in nucleic acid in this manner is because these uh, purine and pyrimidine uh, moiety atoms also need to be numbered so these are numbered 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 okay and as a result to distinguish between uh, this from this so the nitrogenous base uh, atoms are numbered the ring atoms are numbered 1 2 3 and the sugar atoms are numbered 1 prime 2 prime etc okay so this is the basic structure of a nucleic acid quite simple all we need to know is it is a polymer and the repeating monomer is a nucleotide and the nucleotide itself has three components namely a nitrogenous base a pento sugar and a phosphate group and this phosphoric acid makes two ester bonds and therefore we call as diester bond between adjacent ribose sugar uh, uh, sugars in a long chain and this is what we call as the sugar phosphate backbone okay so the polynucleotide is held together primarily by the sugar and the phosphate sugar phosphate sugar phosphate like this and these are attached uh, to the sugar moiety the nitrogenous bases okay so this is the basic chemistry of nucleic acids but their structure um, you know from the structure you uh, an emergent property arises and emerges and that is shown in this slide so the if you have one polynuclear chain and if you have another one adjacent um the atoms of the nitrogenous bases so the nitrogenous bases project towards each other and the atoms of the nitrogenous bases come close enough for hydrogen bonding uh, to happen okay see here, here you have this you know strongly electronegative oxygen if a hydrogen comes from nearby then you can have a hydrogen bond here and so on so if a guanine and cytosine come adjacent to each other there are three nitrogen uh, three hydrogen bond possibilities so in this introductory class i'm not getting into which are the three atoms here that contribute to the nitrogen uh, sorry hydrogen bonding and similarly if an adenine comes adjacent in the other strand adjacent to a thymine then two hydrogen bonds are possible and these hydrogen bonds individually although they are weak but together in a long chain they are of significant uh, force to hold to hold two polynucleotide chains together as double stranded structures okay so the dna present in our genetic material like for example in our uh, new uh, new in our cell nucleus uh, they are present in a double stranded form one polynucleotide adjacent to another one and the bases stack up in the middle in the center of the two strands uh, held together by hydrogen bonds and this sort of a structure that the nitrogenous bases do not project outward like you know this this side and this this side would be outside instead these are facing each other and this portion is called inner side and facing inside and allowing these nitrogenous the hydrogen bonds to form was proposed by watson and crick and therefore these hydrogen and hydrogen bonds 
are often called as Watson and Crick base pairs or Watson and Crick bonds. Okay. So this is what makes them to be in double stranded form. And in the stacking arrangement, they don't remain like a long ribbon. Instead, they form a helical shape uh, shown here. Okay, so they form uh, a, a helical structure with one uh, turn like from here to here. Uh, they hold about 10 base pairs. Okay. So adjacent base pairs are of 0 0.34 nanometer distance and therefore one turn of this helix is about 3.4 nanometers. So this is called the major groove, this is called the minor groove. So those details today I'll ignore when we get into the nucleic acid structure. Probably we won't be doing that in the biochemistry class, but when you learn molecular biology, uh, where you will learn more about DNA replication, transcription, etc., there you will learn about these structures as well. But for this class, you all you need to know is polynucleotides um, contain uh, nucleotides as the monomer, and the nucleotides have three components and uh, two adjacent strands can base pair, and that base pairing is uh, these are bases and they pair like A, T and G, C and that's why the, it's called pairing and that base pairing bond is actually hydrogen bond. And this sort of a double stranded structure forms a uh, helical twist and that is how the actual DNA structure is. So this is what we need to know. So one important additional information we should know is there is a directionality uh, for these strands. Okay. So let's go a little bit back and come to this again. Yeah. So here, if you look at it, um, say if you take this ribose, let us say this is at one end of a long chain. So that means here you, it is no longer, it is not attached to any more uh, nucleotide at the, towards the bottom of this slide. So that means this hydroxyl group, this three prime hydroxyl group. Um, so anyway, why it's not going away? So this this hydroxyl group here would be free. This is not by esterified with uh, any other phosphate. So this will have a free hydroxyl group at this end. This three prime carbon will be free hydroxyl group. On the other hand, at the other end of this chain, so you have here, therefore, this is the five, this corner here is this five prime carbon. So five prime has a ester linkage. This one has three prime. So it's five prime, three prime, five prime, three prime, like that it goes. At the very end of this, this uh, ribose at its five prime corresponding to this carbon, has only one phosphate attached and it is not linked any further or it may not even have a phosphate in some situations okay and this end where the five prime is free we call the five prime end of the chain and this end where the three prime hydroxyl is free we call three prime uh, end of this chain so this particular ribbon shown here runs five prime to three prime in this direction. So if another molecule comes here exactly in the opposite orientation, suppose if I reverse this and have five prime free here and three prime frame uh, free here, it would be anti-parallel to this. And that is the kind of chain with which this base pairing happens. So one chain or one strand runs anti-parallel to the other one. If this is uh, shown here, five prime to three prime. See, this is five prime to three prime. Five prime is free, not linked uh, in a to another nucleotide. So therefore, this is five prime end. This is not linked to another one. Therefore, this is three prime end. So this five prime three prime strand base pairs with 
um, another one that is 3 prime to like for the same direction this is 3 prime 5 prime this is 5 prime 3 prime in this direction okay so so one strand essentially base pairs with another strand that is anti parallel okay so so this is another thing you need to know so when you when when people talk about a 5 prime and a 3 prime and you need to correctly understand do not think that you know in the top of the slide is the 5 prime end and the bottom of the slide is the 3 prime end that's not how it is okay so molecules are in solution they have three dimensional arrangement and they can be in any orientation so when we say this these are all with reference to other constituents of the molecules not the way we are schematically writing so so that is all we are going to learn about rna and dna for this very introductory class and now we go and familiarize ourselves with the fourth um, large biomolecule Th these are the only four we need to learn so biochemistry is actually not that complex considering the complexity of organisms so the last class we are going to learn are the lipids okay um so again let us focus on the functions so lipids are extremely important molecules okay without lipids we wouldn't be able to exist as we exist now so they are very important the the most uh, obvious one easy to understand is that all our cell membranes the biomembranes are made up of lipids okay and uh, lipids present just below our skin subcutaneous fat insulates our body internal organs from variations in the temperature in the outside environment okay so they help in insulation and these are actually the most compact storage of energy so carbohydrates we learned also store energy right so so we learned that the carbohydrates uh, like for example starch and uh, glycogen in our animal liver i told uh, they store um, energy so in addition to carbohydrates uh, lipids also store energy lipids are actually they store um, more energy uh, per mole compared to carbohydrate that that is because these are highly reduced and as a result their energy content is more than that of carbohydrates so they nearly store double the amount of energy um, per uh, unit mass compared to carbohydrate so they are uh, re serious storage of energy for, for example if you take all the seeds like oil seeds like groundnut mustard and so on um, so they they have stored the energy in the most compact form therefore the seed size need not be very big and these uh, lipids are then um, used to derive energy for the seed to germinate and grow so since this is a very compact form of uh, storage of energy the seeds use them primarily for storing um, a large quantity of energy required for seed germination uh, until photosynthesis can be started in the form of oil so so these are really important so they, therefore we you know we, we we cannot ignore lipids so what are lipids like are they again uh, may polymer made up of monomers uh, no so they are different so they are large molecules but they are not polymers so that's one big difference uh, between the <coughs> the other three groups and lipids so lipids are actually different uh, types of molecules some are fatty acids these are like acetic acid you know acetic acid ch3coh right so you have one carboxyl group now if you keep increasing the chain you know instead of ch3coh you have ch3ch2coh or ch3 ch2 ch2 like that if you keep increasing the length of the chain what you get are fatty acids so then uh, we will look at the structure in the next slide and these fatty acids when you esterified with an alcohol a sugar alcohol 
you get what are called triacylglycerols and to them if you add a phosphoric acid you get phospholipids then there are some aromatic rings called sterols and then waxes so these are the five major kinds of um, lipids we have so uh, lipids are also known as fats okay so f a t fat so uh, they they are synonymous so we will look at each one of these how they look like and how their unique structures help the current uh, kind of functions they uh, uh, perform okay so these are fatty acids so you have a carboxylic acid so that's why they are acids and a long chain of aliphatic group okay with the carbon's valency all you need to do is just to fill it by adding hydrogens okay the last one is ch3 so when you have a chain like this this is called saturated fatty acid okay and if you have a double bond in the chain and this is a degree of unsaturation like one bond is unsaturated so we call this as mono unsaturated fat fatty acid and poly unsaturated when you have multiples of them okay and these molecules are essential the poly unsaturated mono unsaturated are very important and uh, as uh, and uh, some of them cannot be made in our body so they are usually made by microorganisms and plants and therefore they are to be present in our food and we call them as essential fatty acids so don't worry about that for now so all you need to know is fatty acids can either be saturated or they may be unsaturated and depending on the degree of unsaturation we call them mono unsaturated or poly unsaturated so these are often called free fatty acids because these are not these ha carboxylic groups are not linked to any other molecule okay so as a result they are called ffa so if you take um, any food like if you take a biscuit packet and look at the ingredients and some of them where the labeling is very professionally done they will tell you ffa how many grams per 100 gram of that uh, biscuit so ffa stands for free fatty acids and under that they would have labeled uh, you know mfa or pufa p u f a poly unsaturated fatty acid they would have written that so you can look at any food packet any packaged food if you take and look at the composition or ingredients uh nutritional facts and there you will see that and um, so i told you they are free fatty acids and they they may the carboxylic acid may be linked to other molecules and one form of linking leads to what we call triacylglycerol this is the form in which our cells store fat okay so fat is stored sometimes to some limited quantity in um, liver as well uh, some of the diabetic patients have large storage of fats in the liver are called fatty liver and the most of the normal people we have fat stored uh, in adipose tissue that that's a sort of a tissue that is present um, uh you know lining the internal organs in the body cavity and primarily under the skin subcutaneous fat um and that is primarily in this form so here the fatty acid the acid group here is the hydroxyl group okay uh that is because it is not merely hydroxyl group it is attached to a carbonyl carbon here so as a result it has acid property not alcohol property and here you see this hydroxyl group another um, organic molecule this is alcohol so this is an ester linkage so glycerol is actually a sugar alcohol okay so it is it looks more like the glucose instead of six carbon it is having three carbon the difference is it uh, it doesn't have that uh, aldehyde group here 
okay and uh, all of them have uh, an uh, hydroxyl group attached so we call this as a sugar alcohol in the aldehyde here you have an alcohol group aldehyde or ketose group you have an alcohol group so therefore it is a sugar alcohol so with these three alcohol groups of glycerol when you have three fatty acids linked you call that as triacyl glycerol this carboxylic acid moiety is called an acyl group and you have three acyl groups attached to glycerol so this is glycerol derivatized with three acyl groups and that is why it is called triacyl glycerol okay so butter for example shown in this plate is primarily triacyl glycerol okay so from triacyl glycerol going to phospholipid is no big deal it is a small change in the structure and here i have shown its importance uh, in terms of the function uh, you know i always um, you know get fascinated by the beauty of this molecule so what it does is suppose if you look at this structure so here the bulk of the molecule is essentially this um, aliphatic uh, group there are no polar groups here it is totally hydrophobic molecule okay so it is just not going to dissolve in water at all so as a result it is very useful to compartmentalize aqueous environment okay aqueous meaning water based so our cytoplasm like the inner part of the cell is aqueous so separating one cell from another cell means you need something that can partition or compartmentalize um, water based solution so that means the compartment has to be something that is hydrophobic and that is served well by this um, you know hydrophobic nature of these uh, fatty acid tails of triacyl glycerol but that is okay in normal you know artificial human being generated world but biology is lot more sophisticated so here the lipid does not serve merely as a partition it actually can interact upon need so that is provided by derivatizing this molecule so instead of this group having a fatty acid attached this alcohol group of glycerol instead of esterifying with another fatty acid it is in an unhy it is in a ester linkage with an inorganic acid which is the same phosphoric acid that we saw in nucleic acids so instead of this third fatty acid you have a phosphate attached and once you have phosphate attached it is called phospholipid that's the difference between triacyl glycerol and phospholipid so phospholipids have two acyl groups in glycerol and the third one is a phosphoric acid and the other two acid groups of phosphate may be now uh, derivatized with uh, attaching to other polar molecules and they are the the, the very basic phospholipid has just the phospho uh, phosphoric acid and that is called a phosphatidic acid uh, we will learn that in detail when we go to the lipids class so for now all you need to worry is in triacyl glycerol the last free fatty acid is replaced with a phosphoric acid to make a phospholipid due to this what happens is this becomes highly hydrophilic so this molecule becomes amphibetic it has a hydrophobic group as well as a hydrophilic group and that is what you are seeing here so if you look closely on the on this uh, round structures each one of these yellow round structures um you will see two tails jutting out and each of those two tail like structures are nothing but these two groups and that yellow itself is this glycerol with its phospho phosphoric acid and other uh, hydrophilic things attached to that phosphate group and that is what we call as the head group 
so we call that as head group and the two fatty acids as the tail group okay and this tail groups point towards another layer of phospholipid molecules and these hydrophobic things interact among themselves through hydrophobic interactions and these head groups being hydrophilic they can interact with the hydro uh, water based aqueous environment so in this manner phospholipids help in sub compartmentalizing aqueous environments but at the same time the compartmentalization comes from this okay the two acyl groups here at the same time they are not in uh, they are in talking terms with these aqueous environments they can interact through this so basically it's a wettable surface this um, head group can interact with water and this head group can interact with water this side and this the two layered membrane or bilayer is what is our cell membrane is so this is the importance of the phospholipids do not worry about these structures we will learn about them later these are basically proteins embedded in the form by lipid bilayer so our cell membrane is uh, nothing but um, these phospholipids so each phospholipid is essentially triacyl glycerol in which the third alcohol group of glycerol is esterified with a phosphoric acid and that phosphoric acid may have other polar groups attached to it and that is how phospholipids themselves are um, many kinds of them so that is phospholipid and the last class of lip uh, not the last one the last but one are the sterols okay so what are sterols sterols the very basic uh, kind of sterols present in our uh, in in living organisms uh is cholesterol and all sterols including cholesterol have this ring structure so this is called cyclopentane and this three aromatic rings fused in this fashion is called a phenanthrin so this basic ring unit is called cyclopentano phenanthrin ring okay so this is basic uh, for all the sterols uh, in our body and one sterol varies from another sterol in the other constituents like this uh, side chain and presence of these methyl groups this double bond this hydroxyl group when you have all of this it is cholesterol if you have some other group then it is some other name okay sterols are also very important move many signaling molecules in our body including the two hormones that are responsible for uh, being male or female is sterol molecules testosterone and estradiol so they are derivatives of cholesterol okay so that the that is all we are going to learn about sterols right now so sterols are uh, made up of this uh, five membered sorry four rings formed in this manner and they may have derivatives and the basic one is cholesterol and cholesterol again is a storage lipid and extremely essential important molecule um so you would have learned about cholesterol already in the common uh, you know newspaper and uh, your um you know friends and family talking about cholesterol being bad and somebody's cholesterol is high and as a result that person has diabetes or hypertension etc but those issues are only when the normal molecules have gone in the wrong way when when they are too much or their production and degradation is not managed right that's when you have abnormality otherwise these molecules are absolutely essential cholesterol is embedded in these uh, lipid mem uh, this uh, phospholipid bilayer and that's very important for our membrane function and in addition this is precursor for all the uh, steroid derivative hormones and those hormones are important signaling molecules okay so they therefore they have very important functions the last group of molecules we are going to learn are the waxes 
and waxes are extremely hydrophobic uh, they are um, simply long chain of fatty acids which we are already familiar and assume another long aliphatic chain at the end instead of having carboxylic acid suppose it has an alcohol group okay they are called fatty alcohols so when you have such a long fatty alcohol and a long chain of fatty acid linked in ester bond you call them waxes and the waxes coat the surface of the leaves like some of the shiny leaves uh have that and um, and due to that they are extremely hydrophobic and uh, protect the leaves from transpiration they don't readily lose um moisture due to evaporation so they give that protection so that is why the leaf surface is shiny the shi shi shininess comes from the uh, a coating of wax so for us as biochemists our uh, the information about wax is they are esters made up of long chain fatty acids with the long chain fatty alcohols okay they are also they, they, they are stored in uh, marine animals like whales and they are important source for making fragrances also okay um so that that's about a wax so we are sort of running out of time so i'll stop here so we have learned today the basic biochemistry of nucleic acids and lipids and we looked at the different kinds of lipids so in the next class we'll uh, move on to the next topic where our goal is to understand uh, how the arrangement or the way in which the constituents of a molecule are arranged in space in the three dimensional space become very important in biology okay in chemistry it doesn't matter the reactions happen through the functional group so as long as a given functional group is there the reaction is going to happen but in biology simply the presence of functional group is not uh, enough the actual arrangement of atoms in a molecule the three dimensional arrangement becomes important and that is what we call a stereochemistry so we will learn that topic in the next class